All right. I think we are live. Trying to get everything set up. As you can see, I've got a mess. <clears throat> a mess back here. Uh, I had to clean up some painting stuff. I've still got a mess over here from giveaways and such. Uh, Debo was in shambles today. I'll, I'll tell you more about that here coming up. So Chad says he can hear me. Yeah, I had a different, I had my gaming headset on and stuff, and it just felt stupid. I hated it. Um, Nathan says, is it playing? Can't see it on my end. Yes. Uh, let me know if I'm working. Can everybody see me okay and hear me okay? Let me know. Chris Russ in the house. Uh, Nigel, Rob Harrison. What's up, Rob? Camp Waffle Stomper. How are you, sister? William, Randall, Sully. Hear you loud and clear. Matthew Acevedo. Oh, Matthew, you never hit me up, too, if you have questions on your handles. Do you get those fixed? Um, oh, Jim, the tackle junkie in here. By golly, we got Gramps, too. <clears throat> We've got a, a whole a whole ton of people. All right, what's up, Fish and friends? Welcome to another live. We got, dang, we got 135 people in here. Mm, I love it. Uh, Rick and Bass Race says, Debo, Iowa gang, what's up? Leanne in here. We got a bunch of folks. So welcome, <laughs> uh, Critical Gravy. Welcome to the live. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, I'm going to update y'all on uh, my little ice fishing escapade. There will be a, a, a live or a, uh, a video of it. <clears throat> uh, what else coming in? Oh, there. Oh my gosh. What? What is that? Is that something coming from from the rafters? Is it? It's dropping down. It's. It's oh, dizzle. oh my golly. <laughs> <That's not dizzle. laughs> It's, Alex, it's, uh, Alex is looking <clears throat> flutter behind you. Dude, it's a freaking mess down here. I've been breaking down cardboard boxes. We were cleaning like Christmas stuff out. It's uh, it's in shambles. I even filmed a video over there and an unboxing with like this much space. It's oh, it's absolute mess. But Dizzle, I had like four people by the time I finally got on. I had four people saying, Is Dizzle gonna make appearance? Uh, I think Michael said, Are you gonna bring Dizzle out of retirement for a, a live? Yeah, I uh, <clears throat> as everybody can kind of hear, my voice isn't a hundred percent back. But <clears throat> like last week, it was it was trash. I would try to talk, and it was just like uh, 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 terrible, terrible, terrible. And it was that just from cheering all my videos on the videos you've been watching. You're like, yes, yep. Steven. Hundred percent. I was like, wait, unbox that stuff. <clears throat> <clears throat> and I'm like, I can't uh... wait to get some of that Abu Garcia stuff. You. Just I'm gonna steal some of it. That's all right. Hey, we can we can swap swap back and forth and try stuff. Absolutely. Um, Dude, how hey, those we... grips really feel? Like those grips look like they were nice, nice. What grips? On the uh, Abu Garcia, the spin oh, rod the... and the ice rod too. The yeah, the Veritas one. Or yeah. the Dude, the baitcaster, those... I should say. Oh, the yeah, dude. The the grips on that Jordan Lee baitcaster, money. And I've said before that I think. Uh, like on the Revo X, the, like the little handles on there that kind of get elongated or kind of like flare out at the end. Yeah, I love that because like I, I've said, I you know you made fun of me. I kind of set the hook at like forty five degrees, so it's right. like it always you never slip off on those. The thing I hate about the Revo X though is it's like slickery. Yes, that's a word. Slickery. Sure. No, I agree. And you slip off of it, um, but with these, I like whatever rubber that is. Now I don't know how it's going to work. Like once your fingers get kind of fishy or wet. It could suck, sure. but dry, liked it a lot. Um, yeah, and the Veritas <clears throat> felt really good, too. Ranger's in the house. Ranger, how are you? I haven't talked to you for a minute. Good evening, gentlemen, he says. Hashtag Randizzle. Man, we got a bunch of people in here. And uh, if anybody else needs to jump on, I saw Gramps or uh, Mr. Jim, the Tackle Junkie. If any of you guys want to jump on, uh, like I said, I asked Randy if he was going to be on. Dizzle's like, yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm good, but I, I probably won't be able to talk a ton. He's like, my voice will probably go out. I'm like, well, just save your voice for good comments then. I said, don't, don't say stupid stuff. I think I've but, talked maybe three or four sentences all day long. Good. Keep saving that voice, baby. Save it up. <clears throat> um, so, okay. Quick, I'll give you a quick rundown. I don't want to ruin the video too much, but snow blowed. We got snow blowed is a word. Uh, we got, I think, seven inches. Randall got like seven inches up there. Um, yeah. And it was like the wet, heavy stuff, like crummy. Really? <clears throat> Our, that's yeah, it was really not... weird. Ours was like the light, super fluffy stuff. But I noticed Did you do today, it last night or today? Well, so, that, that was when it was blowing last night. It was light, fluffy stuff. And then I noticed today, as I backed out of the driveway before it was snow blowed to go over to my dad's, 
like that stuff that's in the driveway that I drove over is like, I got to get the ice chipper out to even get rid of half of that stuff. So I guess <clears throat> when it originally fell light fluffy today, kind of wet, sticky, clumpy. Yeah, it was very wet, sticky, clumpy, crappy, yep. yucky stuff here. It wasn't good. Um, let's see. Do we get anybody saying they want to join in? If anybody needs to join in, one of my uh, one of my regulars, feel free to to say invite me or something. I see we got uh, Mr. Hellabass in here too. <laughs> Hellabass. All right, we got a fun crew of people in here. Yeah, if one of you guys want to jump in uh, and be the third or or fourth, if we get a couple. Oh, of hey, I I do got to say, what, um, got? what are the updates, Randall? Give well, us give us a two minute breakdown of the of the the updates of Dizzle. People have missed you. Where have you uh, been, Randy? Tell people where you've been. How come you well, haven't been on the lives, buddy? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I've I've offered multiple times. I'm like, hey, I got a spot out here where I can I can join and I can do this. And you're like, no, whatever, duh. Oh my gosh. Whatever. So uh, yeah, there's that. Um, I been out in Nebraska. Um, the crazy thing, it's so weird, like the weather difference, like you. you 300-ish miles, maybe. I don't even know how far it is. But it's like the weather difference is so crazy. I remember one of the last times, was it around New Year's or Christmas, one of the two, I sent Debo a text or a screenshot of my weather app. <clears throat> and I was like, hey, how's it how's it doing back home? And he's like, oh, God, it's so terrible. It's cold. And I was like, oh, it's like 65 here today. Wish I would have brought my fishing stuff. <laughs> oh yeah i remember that you're like dude i totally could have been fishing all day yeah, yeah it's funny because like my grandpa lives just over two about two and a half hours south of me and it's mm -hmm. in missouri and it's crazy like what he'll say too like they're usually i would say like 10 degrees like warmer than us it's crazy yeah. it's just like just a couple hours you know you wouldn't think that but i mean even yeah. even you for me there's there's sometimes Some days, a yeah. decent difference you know especially yeah. with like snow and like rain even say, rain. yep Cause I'm like, yeah, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? Are we going to go fishing? I'm like, no, nah, it's supposed to rain all day. You're like, well, it's clear here. I'm like, bingo, I'm coming your way. <laughs> right. Dersh, my guy, Dersh. Dersh, you must not be working the uh, the night shift or your, I don't know. I didn't read it all. Uh, hope you're doing well, Debo and Dizzle. I thought of you guys the other day. I had biscuits and gravy for the first time. First it was fine. Time. Yes, everybody. I'll, I'll tip a glass to some B's and D's. Heck yeah, bees and G's are. Mm. I'll be honest. Uh, you can go south on bees and G's pretty quick, pretty easily. But as long as you have a decent biscuit and the gravy is really the big thing. That's. I don't want a too dry of a gravy. I want you know kind of a wetter gravy. I guess I don't know. What are we talking? Is this a fishing podcast or what are we? I don't doing know. Here? It's okay. We can. We can <laughs> Let's get some gravy. I didn't have, I don't have a giveaway plan. I still need to get the, the giveaways. Go figure for last week out. Chris, um, I do have your Monster Bass box. I did see Chris in here and I had it behind me. It's lost in this mess somewhere over here. Um, I've got some, I was going to say kayak upgrades. I don't have a kayak. Some uh, tip up, my ice fishing hut upgrades. I got like a, I don't want to ruin the video too much, but I got like an organizer thing. Like you drill into the wall of it, holds like your propane things and so Randall, oh, so it hangs on the wall? Well, you you drill it to the inside of your hut, and then you can, like, organize stuff on the inside of it. But like it, like, hangs frame, on the right? inside of it. Yeah, on the frame of it, yeah. So I'll we'll give it a try. It might suck, and I might take it off, but I figured it looked kind of cool. I got a couple other little things to put on it. Um, but I'm uh, I'm excited to kind of trick that baby out. I got out today. I guess that's where I was at. Hold on. I got uh, uh, G Fan in the house. G fan supporting the streams, man. G fan, you were on all the streams. Thank you, brother. Uh, he said, "When is Dizzle going to drop his first video when he hits 1K <laughs> subs?" LOL. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dizzle hasn't even done a video, and you've got hey, like what 150 subs. I don't, I don't. Is it that many now? I don't. I haven't. I haven't looked since What's the other that? day. But I mean, I've I've been trying to figure this out. But oh yes. Yeah. Um, it's slow going. Um, I'm not a smart man, but, uh, <laughs> I can't necessarily just get a bigger hammer to make that stuff work. So I'm trying to make it, make it go down. I'm like watching YouTube videos on how to do this stuff on my TV as I'm trying to do it on my computer at the same time. And 
shoot, I, we even had to do like a video conference call the other day, Debo, to like, <laughs> I couldn't even figure out how to yeah. get it downloaded for some reason. I don't know. It was weird. I don't know. I didn't do anything. I just walked you through the steps that you did and it worked. So I don't, I'm not sure. <clears throat> <laughs> Mike, so GFAN, thank you for the donation, brother. Anybody that donates, thank you all. Like I said, I never asked for it, but helps a ton. Goes to the giveaways, goes to mailing, goes to anything I can put into new content for you all. Um, hoping to get some more gear reviews and stuff up. I really love, honestly, the gear reviews. I'm such a gear nerd. The gear reviews are some of my favorites. And as I've said before, I just, I'm lacking on them because I want them to be perfect. And like some of them I've shot, like the SLX DC, I shot that video like three times and I still haven't put it out. So I got to get over that and just start getting some of the gear reviews out there. Um, but I want them to be good because I'm like, I want, I want them to look nice. Uh, Mike, Mike Vogel said, Randy gets killed. Randy gets girlfriend. Coincidence? I don't know. Randall? I she didn't. I don't me? have a kill yet. Kill? So. Oh, baloney. Um, <laughs> and I don't know who said it, but somebody just said something about, um, where is it? Oh, God. Something about me giving my Miller High Life uh, tin away. Um, Still got that's it. Not, that, Still that's not going to happen. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, I was actually at work one day and somebody like came up to my desk. You know, I was like salary person at the time. And they're like, dude, 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 dude. Hey, uh, there's a garage sale just like a block and a half away. And they're selling like a bunch of beer signs and like oil and gas signs and stuff like that. But they have a giant Miller High Life sign like sitting out on the on like the lawn so i was like i i emailed my boss i was like i gotta i gotta go i'll be right back i gotta go <laughs> and so i go over there and like i didn't have any cash on me and the guy's like uh you know whatever i'll take uh you know 60 bucks for it or something like that i don't even remember and i was like okay i promise i'll be right back i'll give you something you want to hold on to something of mine because don't let that thing get away and, and as i'm leaving this like car full of like frat buddies pull up and they're like oh miller high life sign let's buy that thing Boo. and the guy's like no that guy's getting it and he's and the guy's like uh, well i'll give you double what he's giving you and he's like no that guy's getting it <laughs> so i was like yes yeah you stuck to your word <laughs> exactly so West, westfall we've got a bunch of good bank fishing questions I forgot that was what I named. I almost had a heart attack and died today. Uh, so went ice fishing, got to the, got halfway there, came back. I forgot my wallet, got my wallet, went back out, got there and found out I left my seat to my hut back home. So I didn't even think to sit down. I didn't have a bucket. I didn't bring anything else with me. I brought my hut and I thought I had all my stuff in there. What a dummy. So I had to sit on my heater so I couldn't use my heater because I was sitting on it. Last year I made a mistake of getting my leg too close to my heater and I burnt a hole all the way through my snow bibs. Um, so did do some ice fishing, but the snow, like we said, we got seven inches. Plus there was already snow there before. So it was like all the way up to the middle of my boots. Dragging that damn shack is I, I got up a hill cause there's like a decent hill. Like right when you first get to this spot and I almost died, I almost had a heart attack and died there. And then the ankle biters get you. And yeah, right. I get out there, finally got it all set up and stuff. I'm like, I just sit down because I'm like, I'm going to pass out. I'm fat and out of shape. What's going on with my life? <clears throat> Ended up finally getting on some fish, drilled like six holes, um, caught some fish. And then on my way back, I had to take like 10 breaks because it was, uh, yeah, I was, I was a little out of shape. Oh, and then I forgot my scoop, you know, that you scoop your holes out oh, with. Geez. So my scoop, my holes were all full. <clears throat> so I had this like little, uh, I had this little uh, old tip up flag in the bottom of my thing. I was using that. It was just, it was, yeah, dude, it was, I was in shambles. Shambles was the name of the, the deal. <laughs> Alan has this deep stories. Do not make me miss ice fishing. Usually they're not that bad, but so yeah. Oh, bank really? Fishing. They're usually, they're not that bad. Like one time we Minus almost got stuck in a lake where we almost died and we almost all of just, it wasn't, we almost died. We almost died. just lived at that lake. That was yeah, I almost home. just gave up and just was going to waste away there on the side of that hill and die. I, I literally <laughs> contemplated like backing my truck up over the curb through the snowbank to like get us a hitching point to like throw on some like paracord and like drag each other up with winches and stuff. And we didn't. Somehow we made it out. That was horrible. God. 
Dude, I've been looking at a snow dog. They're like four thousand bucks, three thousand bucks something. But I'm, I'm like, dude, wait, is that a real life dog? What is a snow? No, dog? no, it's off the show. I'll send you send you links. Um, okay, so I did say tonight we were going to talk about bank fishing stuff. So we're just going to go bank fishing questions, <clears throat> full full gear. You guys are going to run a lot of this, guys and gals. Um, so Westfall Outdoors says, uh, Debo's Fishing, what rod do you recommend for the SLX you sent my way from the Autism Angler Live? So Westfall uh, won an SLX uh, that I sent off of <clears throat> uh, Burley and Paul's. I gave away one of my SLXs. I gave away some lures and stuff. My, I would actually say I've got I've got a brand new SLX rod that I got on sale, and it's I believe the seven foot. It's actually over there somewhere. What seven. I think mine, my DC is on a. I think We're it's a. Share. We can just share God, what is that? Is it a Veritas? I think it's on. Um, oh, he just said recommended for the SLX. I'm sorry. I thought he said what SLX rod would you recommend for it? What rod? Um, it depends on your budget, dude. Uh, it sucks because there's places that just had the Dobbins Fury on sale. Um, I mean, let's, yeah, I let's just go with a non for sale rod, just like a, a good any day go out and buy it type of rod you know <clears throat> so, D Dobbins Fury is always a good place to start place to start Words. so for like 100 bucks you can get like a 734 or a 744 <clears throat> hella bass is on <clears throat> he can kind of correct me I think it's 734 is what they have uh that I had that I really liked that I used for chatterbaits Oh, 733 and 734 is what I have. I just remembered. I've got two of those. Um, so 733 or 734. Either one, the 30, 733 is just a little bit softer. So it's a seven. The first two numbers are the length. So it's a seven foot three, three power. Um, yeah, so Hello Bass says the 734 is a great all around rod. So either one of those is a, a good place to start. Um, I'm trying to think of some of my favorite like $100 ish rods. I don't know if you said. Uh, John, but Tommy in the house, I haven't seen you for a minute. How are you, dude? I mean, you could probably get away with like a, a like a mojo bass. Well, I guess what are you what are you using it to fish with? Did uh, I miss that part? Yeah, there's so many questions. Now you're going down all the questions I go down when I when I have a right. person. I need to do like a video on this. And because this is there's like a certain path I go down. What how much money are you looking to spend? What are you using it for? Yeah. Like because I was gonna say, like St. Croix's got the mojo bass line, and that's like what i think they're like 110 bucks something like that and they have the new and, bass x's out yeah i i haven't seen any of those in person yet well i don't know what to tell you uh yeah the Ver g fan the veritas plx i do like that rod a lot too is that the black one i forget which one's the white one and which one's the black one i have the black one as a spinning combo on the spinning rod, it is super comfortable. I like it a lot. I think. Well, well what color is it? <clears throat> That's what I said. Is it black or white? The Veritas PLX. No, but no. I'm asking color. what color yours is. It's black, but I don't know if that's the Veritas PLX or not. I think it is. The Veritas is white. Well, they have two, they have two versions. Well, yep. The one versions. that that I said is the white one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yep. <laughs> <clears throat> um let's just look let's jump over um uh, let's share real quick yeah there's hit me up after and i, I can kind of go through the questions with you uh westfall um well, let's, let me look up my tab here and then we can check that out real quick and see so the veritas uh, okay, so the Veritas PLX is the white one. That's the regular one. Those are good rods. That's when I caught my catfish on that one day. If you if y'all watch that video, I was oh, throwing the in, the, the, in, uh, in the monster topwater place that we went to. Yeah, that didn't turn out. And, and that old man came walking up on us, and he's like, "Yep, it's pretty hot out here today." He's like, "That's not how you catch fish. I cast right over there. I knew I was gonna catch a fish." The Veritas <laughs> PLX TE. Is that tournament edition? I would have guessed that stands for tournament. Yeah, yeah tournament. right there. This one's really huh. sweet. I have the spinning version, and it's really light. 
the reason I like it so much for spinning, I guess I can't really say for the casting version, but like where you hold your finger. So I hold my hands like this. I don't hold it like this with the spinning, like the, uh, like the real foot here. I hold my rods like this and put my finger on top and it's real skinny up top. I hate bulky spinning rods. Like I hate where all that's do, bulky up top. Do you get that like a ice fishing rod right there handy where you could show that or like another um, rod? Grab one. I can just grab that. Yeah. Yeah. Do that real quick. <clears throat> um he while while Debo's going to do his stuff, I actually tried to uh I showed him how to get the Bluetooth ability on his computer or how to set it Funny up. Enough, it's like the that. One he, I was just messing with it. He said that he doesn't he doesn't have that ability. So we tried. Ability. Uh the Bluetooth uh headset thing. Oh yeah, I I tried. Bluetooth doesn't work on my computer, so it doesn't have it. So this is that uh PLX. Okay. TE Veritas. But up here, super skinny. There's nothing up here. I freaking love that. So I hold my, my spinning rods like this. I don't hold it like this. I know a lot of people hold it like that. I hold it like this and then finger here. So I don't like, know. Just, like you're, you're kind of pointing with your index or your pointer finger, right? Yeah. So I see a lot of people will hold it like this, like where their fist is on it and they work it like that. Sure. Or here, however they hold it. I hold it like this and use my finger on it so I can feel like when I'm working right. it. But that's just a, a way I hold it thing. Maybe not everybody holds it like that, but um, I guess the, just the moral of the story is I don't like <clears throat> spinning rods that have a bunch of bulk up there. I just don't find them comfortable, sure. but that's just a, that's just a um, preference deal. So what else? Um, man, we've got a bunch of bank questions. I am so far behind. I'm trying to get to the donations. Camp Waffle Stomper, thank you very much. Uh, she says, the most money lure you ever lost while bank fishing. What did you do to try to get it back? Were you successful? Um, the that, one I that thought, I can... I thought we ahead. went through some great lengths to try to get a lure back recently, didn't we? We, we were... I broke off a of top water like a nine dollar top oh water no you... i was thinking about that that one lake where you uh you did a video on it and you god i don't even remember what it was i want to say it might have been like a shallow running crankbait or something like that and you broke it off in a underwater like offshore brush and i just sat there with like my frog rod with the biggest like bear jig head i had just casting over and over and over again at it until I finally like ripped it out of there and walked back. That was at the, uh, you remember the place where you fell in? Yeah, that was a top water. That was a top water. Was it a top water? Yeah. 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 I remember, I, I feel like that was a pretty, pretty solid effort on my behalf to sit there for, that and was it wasn't good. like, it wasn't like five <laughs> minutes. It was probably a good 10, maybe 15 spent, minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes on it. I was done. It broke off. I got it caught on like one little stick way out and I broke it off. I'm like, screw it. I'm done. And he's like, it's blowing in the wind. It, I'm going to get it. But it was like a $16 bait or something was that like was a, floating. I don't what it, was. it was something the, decent. The most uh, had, would have had to have been one of the Medusas, which is like a 20 something dollar lure when I was musky fishing, got it caught and I could see it out there. And that's when it was like, what, 40 degree water, 50 degree water. And I walked out waist deep, got it, finally had to cut it out. Was, it was I on there? Some of these fishing piers. No, you weren't. It okay. was on these like rocky fishing piers that they built. They literally just like a year before that redid all the bank structure for bank anglers. So I knew exactly where stuff was because the the uh, lake wasn't quite full yet. You can go back and watch it. It's it's all on video. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I got, went like waist deep, got it, and then had to go directly home because I was completely frozen my strawberries were shriveled it was so cold like um, there's lures that i i throw that i'm like if this breaks off on something and i feel like i can get it i'm just going in after it i don't even care but then yeah, there's other lures where it just like break off 78 of them in a row that's way more than the one price of one lure you like know a jig right yeah um eliza says same point <clears throat> tips are too soft for me so Eliza, I don't know all of the different St. Croix lines. I will say I got one of the victory casting rods uh, and it's an extra fast and it feels like a crisp fast. Yeah, I, I guess know... what, what St. Croix are you talking about? Or is it, or is she saying all in general are 
I think she's kind of saying all in general, but yeah, I don't know because some lines like, um, Hella could tell you like some Ooh. of the dot lines. Some are a little bit softer than others. I think it's like she a just Sierra. said Bass X specifically. I don't have very much experience with Bass X. Yeah, I just got my first one, so I don't know. Um, Clay, I agree. I think the TP One X, the white blues, uh, is a really good rod. That's I had really good luck with it this year for hundred, like especially for hundred bucks. Uh, I have like an all purpose and then a six nine that I use for jerk baits this summer or uh, spring and fall. No issues with it. I really like the rod. Hey, um, are you caught up with your donation stuff yet? Or I think so. I think I've got everybody. Uh, I'm scrolling. So, no. okay, yeah, hit that one. Go ahead. Go ahead. What do you got? Dizzle? No, I was I was gonna say I don't know if you remember this this little guy yet or not. Oh yeah, um, it was the, on the, the last. Mindset? Yeah, the last live that we did. So it, it's really hard to see. I mean, you can see it. Can you see kind of the, like, right as it changes from the body yep. to the, right like the cross? Yep. So that's that's right where it is. And, I mean, it's. Yeah. That's some pretty, like, the, the legs were going to pull off before the actual minute part was going to pull off. So, I mean, granted, that's been sitting there for quite a while, but if you want to do that to, you know, one of your frogs or something like that and set them aside for the winter, if you get done in the the summer and fall with your topwater fishing and mended those dogs up, I mean, they're going to be golden for the next next season. Yeah, and somebody said, I was going to look at it on my phone here because I threw it in my Amazon cart. They changed where you go to your orders or your, where the hell is your cart? There we go. Amazon? Uh, Loctite vinyl plastic adhesive. So somebody said the dude from the hookup tackle, somebody commented on one of my my last video where I was talking about some of my best and worst lures of 2021. And they said, I forget what his name is. The dude from the hookup tackle, Ben, I believe is his name, um, said in one of his videos or told this person or something to get some of this vinyl plastic Loctite glue. They said it works really well. So I got that. I'm going to try to fix some of my frogs. Like I, we said before, I know Randizzle's used Mendit to fix some of his frogs. So Mike with another $5 bomb. Mike, thank you. Uh, I said, bank fishing, easy access areas, piers, or push into the woods and make or find a spot. What do you look at that makes you choose one over the other? Uh, it depends. There's some places we do, so especially early spring. And that's one of the things I was going to talk about for spring fishing. Early in the spring, if there's places that you wanted to hit bank fishing that you normally can't, like during the summer and stuff, because the weeds and everything, I mean, weeds, we've got weeds here that get bigger than, than I am. I'm six one. like there it's, I don't know what the grass is, or it's almost like little trees, tree weeds. I don't know what the hell they are. I think they uh, are tree weeds. That's the yeah. technical term. Yeah. Uh, tree weeds, <laughs> <laughs> but they get so big, like you can't even, they get so thick, you can't get in and it goes all the way to the end of the shore. So even if you could get there. You'd have to take like a, a machete and like cut all of it out so you had somewhere to fish. However, early in the spring in a lot of those places, none of that stuff is there. So try uh, venturing out, finding some of those spots. That's one thing we do early in the spring is fish spots that we normally can't get to. Um, spring and fall. Both are, are both good times to kind of get out and, and search those shorelines for, yep. you know, those good yep. spots that are, if you know, if you see something down there, you know it's going to be worth your time to bushwhack through and pull out the machete and make it happen. Right. And then as far as fishing piers, not all fishing piers are created equal. Some of them will be kind of shallow, um, like the ones that we like. What are you laughing at? Some of them have, like, uh, umbrellas that you get your jerk baits caught on. Some of them have umbrellas, yeah. I was We were fishing off a fishing jetty last year, and I hooked an umbrella. And like it was wasn't an umbrella. Canvas. It's that fabric stuff that they put down to keep from. It was an like, umbrella. It was an actual umbrella. I got it almost to the top. I tried casting in there too to snag it to see if we could both pull it up. Yeah, it was an actual oh, umbrella I drug out. <laughs> um, but it was like stuck on wood. Anyway, pallets. Like some of them, some of the fishing jetties will have um, structure that's put there, like pallets, brush piles. So those are always good spots to try and hit. Um, like the ones that are real shallow. You know, unless you know there's fish there, you can see fish. Like, usually we don't waste our time on those. It's the good ones that have where there's the fishing jetty that comes out and there's a good, like, drop-off. Or even, like, some of them will have, like, it'll go down and then it'll have, like, the secondary drop-off. 
that's like a straight drop. So it's like gravel, gravel where they they made it, and then like a really good drop. Those are the really good ones because you can fish like you know crank baits off the sides of them. You can fish jerk baits out off of them. Um, but even some of the more shallow ones, I mean, we fish some that are like three feet deep, and in the summer they might be right up in there on the rocks along any sort of like little weed lines, um, you know, anything that's different. So you just got to kind of try them. I guess we fish both. Yeah. I mean, it, it kind of goes back to your, one of your older videos, Devo, where you were like talking about different types of casts, like your roll cast, your flips, your whatevers. And the important thing is to like actually be able to be at least semi proficient with those because some of the times you get out onto those jetties and you got to, halfway walk down the side of the jetty and it's pretty sketchy to begin with and you got to try to make a roll cast or like a pitch yep. or something like that to get underneath the stuff where you're like oh yeah there's got to be a fish in there i just got to get my lure back there so it's like th that's that's half the battle gi joe you know it's you know making sure you can get back there and then red lasers and blue lasers you gotta figure out the rest you know yep beep, beep. Um, Ron, I agree. The Daiwa Air Decks, absolutely awesome, awesome budget rod. Um, Gabe says seven foot medium Veritas is a good square bill, spinner bait, underspin, and light text rig rod. Um, let's see, I saw a couple others in here. John Boat Tommy, six foot eight, extra fast is great jerk bait rod with the new SLX MGL reel. Absolutely, I really like the SLX MGL, very good reel. Um, colors, Caden, this is actually something I wanted to talk about as well. So in the spring, like when I'm thinking spring fishing, when I'm getting geared up for spring fishing, generally there's a bunch of fronts moving in. What do they say? April showers, bring May flowers. So April, windy, rainy here in the Midwest. And I'm, you know, I'm from Iowa, so different depending on where you're at, but usually spawn here is like May, Mayish time, middle of May. Mm -hmm. Um, is spawn here. So leading up to that, you know, lots of storms, lots of wind. So usually we'll have dirty, muddier water in a lot of places, or sometimes like Randy and I have literally fished mud lines and had good luck where bass will sit in that mud and you can see in the water, it's literally like dirty, muddy stuff all in here. And then the rest of the water is all clean past it. And fish will What's sit that, in that like brackish water. Is that what that's called? Where it's like fresh and salt together and you can see the split uh maybe I, I don't that? know it's super crazy that you can actually see the split on these lines that we're fishing like the old kind of mucky dirty gross nasty water and then you know just inches to your right or to your left either way it's super clean crystal clear water it's crazy yep and i just treat that like a vegetation line because it'll be a hard line most of the time like you'll be able to see a good like hard mud line and just treat that like vegetation and work off the edges of that I caught, let's see, that was two years ago on a spinnerbait, um, bringing it right just on the inside of that mud where it was muddy with like an all-white spinnerbait. I caught my biggest fish uh, of the year at that time uh, was like a four-something pounder, four and a half pounder doing that. I've had good luck bringing like a red rattle trap on the outside of that. That was um, like one of the first videos that I was ever in with you was that yep. year that we you, you busted out the red rattle trap and I stupidly enough didn't even grab a rattle trap rod and i just tried to make it happen but we slammed them that day i don't even know how many we caught probably yeah, we 60 punch. 60 plus fish between the two of us yep and we get so that's another thing like that's kind of the other part of it so look for mud lines look for the spots that have vegetation growing some lakes um like the cleaner clearer lakes will bring that vegetation up quicker light can get through um, depending on the depth and stuff, some of them just grow quicker. I don't know. It must depend on like the type of vegetation. I'm not good with vegetation, uh, weed, weed trees and all that. I don't, I don't know names very well, but look for those ponds that, that get that green vegetation going up. Cause like Randy was saying that day, I was fishing that red rattle trap was decently clear water. There was no mud lines or anything, but we noticed ticking the tops of that grass would bring it up and it was nice, bright green grass. And we just mm -hmm. focused, there was a patch that was maybe like what, 50 yards long on one yeah. side that yeah. we could hit that was there was a good drop off uh and all the fish were in it i mean we caught everything just bringing it right over that so keep in mind when you when you're casting and you're, you're bringing crankbait through whatever and you're like oh i've already got grass on it like you know most people think it's like a pain in the butt right i've got to clear it off 
But that should right. be a sign of, oh, good, there's already grass growing here. You might want to spend a little bit more time there and try to stay yeah. just above it because those fish will be down <clears throat> just in that new grass around the edges of it. You can't really tell where it's yeah, at. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. That, that little short distance between where the boat launch was and then the side of the, the body of water that we were fishing wasn't, like you said, like 50 yards, something like that. And I don't even know. I tried... Uh, or, or maybe I was there and then you hornswoggled me, I think is probably what the case was. But either way, I mean, we don't need to go into those details, but um, like fish after fish after fish, it was, it was insane. And then we actually, we even switched it up and we started throwing out towards, you know, the clean water and bringing it back in through that grass and, you know, stuff like that. So that's definitely something, those little things like that, that you need to kind of look for, even if it is a big, heavy, heavily fish type of area, you still want to kind of get out there and you want to, you know, throw some casts at it just to see. And, and I wouldn't give up on it just because, you know, it's an area where every Tom, Dick and Harry with their minor buckets are going to go out there and throw, you know, their, their bobbers and, and minners, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing. Like we'll see that a lot too. Like we'll see somebody on a, on a, um, like a fishing jetty, but a lot of people are just bobber fishing for, you know, panfish, crappie, whatever. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of times we'll go over there and catch a bunch of bass and that's not even what they're fishing for. So that's something to kind of keep in mind too, that just because there's somebody there doesn't necessarily mean it's all fished out. Um, Grant said, check out the Dobbins website. They just added the Maverick series, black and blue matches the Shimano SLX. I didn't know there was a new rod, Dobbins rod, the Maverick. That's cool. Um, just keep casting said I have done two, like two vids on targeting big bass from the shore, trying to find and fish walls. I always produce my biggest bass, uh, of the season every year. Cool. Check out, just keep casting. Looks like he's got some, uh, he or she. Is that a musky in that picture? Yeah. Is it a musky? It's gotta be a musky. Looks like a Mondo musky. That would be a ginormous pike if that was a pike. That's a musky. Oh, sure. I want to catch a pike that big. So let's see. I'm just going to keep going down on comments. I'm at 8.23, so I'm about 13, 13 minutes behind. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, let's see. Have you ever tried any Berkeley Frenzy cranks or topwaters? I don't even know what a Berkeley Frenzy is. Um, you want to pull up uh, what's it called? I have it up. Can you Tackle see it? Tackle Warehouse? Yep. No, not yet. Oh, yeah, now I can. Um, Berkeley. Why do I not see Berkeley? Because you're not Beer looking in the bees. Berkeley. So what? What did he call it? Barclay. Frenzy? Cranks. Frenzy. Cranks or top. Water. Are you still in rods? No. no. I don't know how that stuff. I think works. there's a little bit of a delay. I'm I'm getting down to it. Um, I don't know. Those must be older. Frenzies, I feel like I've heard of those before. I've never heard of those. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what that is. Can you uh, can you type in frenzy? I don't know. Check it out. Do some research. I'm trying. Trying. Give me a second. Oh, that sucks. Rod says you can get a Bluetooth USB add-on cheap for your computer. That sucks. Yeah, my stupid computer doesn't have Bluetooth. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Pop X got a bunch of crankbaits. Ruben, I got a bunch of crankbaits. What's a good crankbait rod to use? Well, man, that's an open question. Depends what you like. There are some crankbait rods that are a lot more whippy uh, and good for lighter crankbaits. So I have like a Daiwa Tatula rod uh, that I got on sale a few years back. Uh, and it's like a really in between that I like a lot. It's for like, I want to say square bill, top water, something like that. Um, but ge like generally speaking, you want something with some sort of bend to it because when you're fishing treble hooks, actually, I was going to show this, uh, which is something that I want to fish this spring. I finally got my hands on some of the new OG flat sides are a great bait to throw in the spring. Why won't it focus? Come on, baby, do your focus. Nope, not going to focus. Well, anyway, it's the new, uh, OG slim, the four. So I said I really like the six-foot divers, but I feel like they're a little bit too deep for where and how I fish here from the banks. So this is just a smaller version. Do I have the regular? Oh, I do. I have it here from last week. So, and I think Hellabash showed this. I think he got his hands on some. That's the six. So you can see a much bigger version of it versus the little four. 
So flat sides doesn't have to be one of these. There's the uh, the Fritz side that I've actually had the most luck with. And I put that in a few videos, uh, had a lot of luck on that. But those, you know, a lipless, a flat side crankbait, something with a tighter wobble that's not real big and crazy fast erratic uh, is good for spring fishing. So if you've never tried these or, you know, if you've seen like a flat side and thought, what the hell is that even for? Um, that colder water is a good time. So that's something else to pick up. And then I've showed... Ow, I've showed this before too. That poke me. Uh, the chick magnet from Strike King, which is another version of that flat sided type crankbait. So if you've seen those, those are a good one to throw. Um, spinner baits. Gosh, we could go all over the place with spring stuff. Jerk baits. But yeah, something with a good good amount of bend to it, and then you just kind of have to match it with the the weight of lures that you're using and how big of hooks you're using. So if you're throwing like a little, you know, a smaller jerk bait, something a little bit more whippy, something rated for lighter lures uh, versus if you're throwing like a big 2.5 square bill, something like this, that one of my, I, I, I can't get it stuck on a cord. One of my subscribers. Sounds like a good one to cast. So if you look at the difference here, this little flat side versus that's a big 2.5, like a Lucky Craft 2.5. Can see the difference there so bigger hooks smaller hooks just kind of gonna match it but i like something with a little bit of a parabolic bend keep them hooked um what the now? crazy thing debo is if you were to just google uh image search berkeley frenzy i think you're going to realize what they are when you see them they have that the packaging is like that primarily yellow background oh yeah Gosh, I don't know. That, those are older ones, right? I don't. Yeah, I don't they are I older. I don't know as if I've ever really used a whole lot of any of those. Yeah, I remember seeing some, but no, I don't know that I've ever used any of the Berkeley Frenzy stuff. Okay, Vision One Ten. Oh, G Fan said Vision One Ten spent twenty minutes trying to get it back to cry. <laughs> I can see that for like what twenty five bucks for one of those. <laughs> remember that? You remember that one time that Pike stole your uh, your plopper? Mm. When the plopper, the whopper ploppers first came out, Debo Gosh. hooks up on a pipe. Oh, they, they hadn't first came out. That's when I finally caved and got some. Oh yeah, they've been yeah, out yeah, for yeah. a while before that. Quite a long. They were time. still, they were still like fifteen-ish bucks, weren't they? I just thought they were stupid and never wanted 10, to get 15, one because I'm yeah. like, they're a gimmick. Like I'm not going to buy one of those stupid things. <laughs> God, we had a we had a tally going that day on how many baits we had lost. It's just like one of those days where we start out fishing and it's like there's there's a lure 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 it's like neither one of us could do anything except for break off <clears throat> yeah you have those days yeah that so that day we lost i don't know multiple frogs to pike which like i love pike fishing especially top water i would take it over bass fishing a lot of days just because it's so explosive it's a bunch of fun blasphemy man they were just because we didn't have leaders on we were fishing for bass and in this place the the pike were just thick so that we each lost a couple frogs I got at the plopper and like, well, maybe I can get them, you know, better with this. I finally hook a good pike. We, I get it up to the dock. It's like flailing around. I'm trying to get a hold of it. And they're like, you know, slimy snakes. Well, Turkey finally, it like, yeah. Oh God. Finally it shakes, cuts my line. And I'm like trying to like dive on it. You know, like the, the heroic guy does on the grenades and the, in the movies, Captain America style. I'm trying to do that and dive on this pike. Well, it goes over the edge and then just like slowly swims off with like my whopper popper one, 110 or 130 just, just like out of its mouth just like yeah. hey see you and later like, no and i hate like i hate losing lures in a fish that makes me feel bad and then like yeah. on top of that like you can just see it i'm like oh gosh crazy days what else okay let's get into some more bank fishing questions um i am so far behind it's <laughs> none of this is even matching what we're talking about <laughs> people still talking about bass x um, um I, the sponsorship going outdoor angling if you have if you have anybody let us know we're still working on that dizzle mendit sponsorship I did see, yeah. and this is this is actually going back a little bit further i did see quite a bit of talk i don't remember what it was specifically about but doing drop shotting from the bank i don't remember who was talking i i can go look for that while you keep going on yours so chris has been a supporter since like day one old og supporter uh, Chris, always appreciate you, brother. Hope you're well. $4.99 super sticker. You didn't need to do that, but I appreciate you, my friend. 
Uh, what else? We got Mendit sponsorships. Yeah, if anybody knows uh, a Mendit sponsorship for Dizzle, let's let's get up Dizzle all hooked up. <laughs> People saying yes. Uh, what else? New Dobbins. <clears throat> got a lot of Dobbins talk. I like the Dobbins stuff. I was just watching Fishing with Gramps. I was just bringing that up again to someone. Um, I think Fishing with Gramps said he's going to kind of focus on the Dobbins stuff, which will be nice so I can kind of pick his brain. Because when uh, American Legacy had their big sale, I bought a couple rods that Fishing with Gramps showed on his live or something. And trying to couple the little bit more expensive Dobbin rod that I've, I've never used before. But, I mean, the Fury, I almost bought a, a crankbait rod the other day. I actually thought I bought it and didn't. But they had the Dobbins rods on sale for like 80 bucks, uh, And I didn't get it. I thought I did. But yeah, Dobbins Fury and then the black and blue Champion XP, I think it is or whatever, uh, that Hella Bass recommended. I freaking love that rod. That was one of my favorites of the year. Also, the Kistler stuff that I got into this year, really digging the Kistler. Some of the rods are a little bit more expensive, but the KLX, they have a lot of sales. So I got the KLX for like $100 less. It was like when they were 200 bucks. Dang. Freaking love that rod. <clears throat> love it. Okay, what else do we have here? When we're talking about the Maverick, I didn't even know about that rod. Um, does rubber <laughs> got more biscuits and gravy talk? It's eight thirty. We're oh my gosh, we're forty five minutes into the stream. Yeah. I thought we were maybe thirty minutes in at most. Holy crap! And I don't even. I feel bad. I don't have a giveaway for tonight. So I was. I got a couple of the Tackle Warehouse gift cards when they were on sale, and I thought it was going to be quick, and that was going to be the way to go. But it took me like a week, almost a week and a half. And I had the two guys that won it were like, hey, we still getting the giveaway? Like, what's up, dude? Well, I thought you said we won. You were going to email us the thing. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Uh, they're taking forever to send it. So they don't like actually send you the the gift card code until like your order ships. So it's like when your order ships, it must generate the code deal. I figured you'd get it right away, but it doesn't. So I, I, I got to say, Debo. Devo's always late on stuff. Like every time we go fishing, I'm always waiting on him and stuff like that. So we we all know that's boring. We all know that. <laughs> My guy Philip, Philip in the house, he said he caught a drone once. That'd be crazy to pull a drone up from the depths. Dude, I don't remember who it was. Um, you'll give me crap for it, but if I say who I think it was, um, there's a uh somebody was casting like a crankbait and they just happened to as they cast perfect timing they hooked like a seagull or something like that i'm like how does that even why oh god I the do you, what do you once. do <laughs> you did That's, that will go on the worst of i need to put the together like my uh what do you call that bloopers i need to put like a 2021 bloopers reel together let me know if y'all would like to see that a 2021 bloopers reel that didn't make it to the final cut of that video i only caught like two fish that day but i did catch a great blue heron and i thought it was going to be an absolute disaster but luckily what was it, it like four out. years ago i almost caught an owl <laughs> randall had his frog dangling from a tree and he's like oh look and he was like making some funny sounds and this owl swoops down and almost grabs his hand hurry up and reel it in God, man. <laughs> um okay what is this oh that was Eesh. arthur arthur fish daddy 401 in the house arthur how are you brother outdoor angling says debo what real brand do you i'm guessing he's saying think that are overrated um Daiwa, all Daiwas. oh shut your mouth randy hates <laughs> Daiwa. he's had bad luck with Daiwa reels uh you you have my my only die will reel don't you yeah yeah oh so that was the one that's the only one that you've had that's that was the yep. one that gave you issues that's, way back that's the only one oh my that's gosh. how that's how long randy. it's been that so thing. randy had a oh. one bad die with spinning reel like a super old one he probably never took care of it and he's blaming it was the brand bruise brand new out of the box and it you don't have to yell at me why are you raising your voice now I, now i suspect why oh my god um i'm kind of, i'm kind of a Daiwa fan but i really like the Daiwa reels ever since the zillion i've got a few more of their reels um obviously shimano i think shimano makes the best the, the most well refined feeling reel the most refined feeling i don't know not an english major 
But I remember the first time I put my hands on a Corrado, it was at Gander before Gander went out of business. They got them in right when the Corrado case came out. And I was like, can I see one of those? Like, I'm not going to buy one. Because at the time I was still on the fence about Shimano because I didn't want to be like one of the Shimano fanboys. Uh, that's honestly why I'd never bought a Shimano because I, I hate the guys that were like, oh, I only fish Shimano. If you don't fish Shimano, you're an idiot. And it's like, there's so many good reels out there. Anyway, I fished it or uh, I took it out of the thing to, to reel it. And it was like, dude, this thing is absolute butter. And like, there's some reels that feel like really good, like super smooth, but that crowd, okay. And I know they have even, even more expensive ones, but that was just my first experience, man. Those things are, are nice. We got a we got a question slash uh, yeah. donation from Eric. We should probably touch on that one. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to work my way down, but um, do I feel any overrated? No, I, there's good and bad. I kind of think with everything. So like the SLX, I know SLX is like everybody loves them. Everybody will tell you it's the best. I think they are really good reels. However, I think for a beginner with having only the centrifugal brakes, I've said it before, like the Lose LFS with just the simple magnetic brakes inside. They're simple. They're effective. They work in the in the wind better. Uh, I think for a beginner, that type of reel is better than the SLX. I yeah, think the I SLX do. Is fine. Like it, it's smoother, but I I will say in your video, the Abu Garcia box video, where you said the braking system on the Abu bait casting reels, there's just something about it that it just works really really well and kind of gets it. It's like uh, it, it gives you long enough leash where you're not going to hang yourself, but it's going to be real, real close with, you know, the, the braking system and backlashing and things like that as you're coming up and trying to figure it out and learning and things like that. So I think the Abu Garcias have a really good braking system to, uh, especially for new people. Yeah, I know and, it's I not mean, answering the question, but yeah, you know. it's the typical doyo. I mean, we get, we get into we've gone down these roads how many different times, you know, doyo. Uh, so you're looking at Abu Garcia, uh, Luz, Bass Pro Shop, uh, uh, you know, like Fluger, Fenwick. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they have multiple companies that are or multiple different brands that are made under that, you know, that company. So Shimano has their own stuff. If you look at Japan, like I'll get into the, that argument where all, you know, Japanese rolls, well, that's like the higher price stuff, you know, even Shimano and um, Daiwa aren't even making stuff like in Japan, you know, Malaysia, Taiwan, uh, but they have their own factory type type stuff. So it's a different deal. But anyway, we could do a whole live on that. I think there's good and bad with every company, um, especially nowadays, that line <clears throat> or that that gap is so much closer like in the old days like you could buy an expensive reel and they felt way different than like a, you know a cheap oh, yeah. bait caster you know for sure so now you get a hundred dollar reel and they feel like the super expensive reels of you know 15 20 years ago well that's like just saying that when my my revo winches those feel now today compared to some of the other reels like uh my uh concept c or really any of my lose the the winch it just feels not crusty but it feels like man it's struggling to keep up it's trying to and it's yep. not really getting there but doing the exact same thing on any of these new reels it's just it's it's crazy how much it's changed well i guess it's not crazy considering i think i got those winches and like 20 years ago you know but still yep and you got to clean them you've never cleaned them since so you, you got to clean right. them, Randall. i know well them. Potato, camp potato. waffle stop so let's get some more likes hit the thumbs up yeah hey listen if you want to support old debo uh you can hit the thumb below it's free it doesn't cost you anything it's a click of a button and it helps helps the uh the debo dizzle show out if you Why don't like you it just that's charge okay. me a dollar Backyard Biggins, what'd you think of the Kiss the Reel? I actually got a couple of those reels this year too. Uh, and I was on the fence initially, but after I did some stuff, I really liked them. But let me know what you think. So let's see, I'm trying to scroll down. Gosh, I was so far behind on comments. I'm trying to scroll all the way down and hit the, I just oh, now got to Eric. I just skip over a bunch of stuff. I'm sorry, everyone. We're already at almost an hour. Eric, uh, Debo, what's your favorite frog? Oh my gosh. Favorite frog of all time? I'm going to answer this also. So once you're done. Um, it's almost like our this or that's. I love the this or that's. 
Mm -hmm. Do we have Mr. This or That in the house? Um, my favorite frog of all time, I would say probably the one I've caught the most on would either be the Booyah Pad Crasher, probably the Pad Crasher, because I had tons of those because they were well, cheap. Yeah. I, I'm going to jump like out there and say like a Spro. Yeah. I don't know what the Spro is called, but... Spro, Bronze Eye 65 or whatever. Demon Actually, 65. you know what? I do like the the River to Sea, the ish, the yeah, ish version of, of it. Yeah. God, there's just something about those. They're a little bit bigger. They're a little bit wider. They're a little bit thicker. I just feel like the the plastic holds up a little bit better than what the regular River to Sea ones do. I I don't know. I like those too. I don't know. Yeah, I've I mean I've had really good luck on the regular. I was actually going to say the River to Sea. Uh, what is it called? I just lost. I had it right before I was going to say that River to Sea Bullywa too. Um, the bigger one, the sixty five. I want to say they have a fifty five and sixty five. 65 uh, is my favorite in the all black that's been two or three years ago destroyed on that one but i mean for the money a spro and like i said dude i used to use the booyahs all the time they're just not yeah, the heaviest they don't have the greatest of hooks compared to some of the other ones you sometimes right. you kind of have to bend the hooks up but i mean for oh the money, god what are the what are the scum frogs those are super cheap are they scum frogs uh, well, the new one, the new one I gave you. Uh, no, I'm talking about the old school. Oh, I hated those. I hated the old, old scum frogs. Really? Like the scum rat or the slop rat or whatever. I hated those, yeah. <clears throat> but the new ones are really good. The scum trophy or launch, whichever the new mm -hmm. one is that came out. Um, but you have to watch out because the hooks are already kind of turned up a little bit. So I did get those snagged a little bit easier than some frogs. But if you're fishing like the edges of, you know, reeds or grassland or something, uh, that's a good one. And it casts really well. That's one if you watch Oklahoma's Worst Angler. Um, Alex, another frog fishing lover, he caught on that spro. Let me just look just so I can tell you since I'm bringing up. I don't want to tarnish Alex's name or what he was using here. Um, the spro. Anyway, he caught his PB. I think that's still his PB over in Oak, Oklahoma catching way bigger fish than me. So I, don't, I think he needs to relinquish the Oklahoma's Worst Angler name because he'd be catching some some good ones. Um, where am I thinking here? Frogs. Actually, you know what? Let's just do brand scum frog. Yeah, I really like, like the trophies here. Launch frog. Yeah, so this one and the toad, <clears throat> sloppy toad. That's what Alex mm -hmm. cut his PB on. And I like these because this is that digital print stuff that they use. Yeah. So a lot of them have like a, a pattern on the bottom too, which I really like. But I had the uh, the black one, this one, pitch, good luck on it, and I had the bluegill one. But as you can see, you can actually even see in the picture here how the hooks are already kind of turned up above the body. You just got to be kind of careful with that. Uh, but let's just see the river to see. Bully Law is another good one. I was going to say the Spro. What are the uh, Strike King, the KVD versions? Oh, the KVD Kermit Frog or whatever it's called? Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's Kermit because I think Kermit is Bass Pro's brand is Bass name. Pro? Oh, yeah, you're right. It's the KVD something frog. Yeah, so I, I just like the, the some of those eyes. colors are insane on those. Uh, Spro 65 is what I like. And then they have, and this one, the best color I think that they have is Freak. It's like a black and yellow on bottom. And then also is at Midnight, which is like the black and... Yeah, Midnight Walker, black and red eyes. Like that trim one. down that, legs, of course. Yeah, trim down the legs. Yeah, the spro legs are really long. But, I mean, 90% really, really of the time, I'm throwing an all-black frog. Like, if I could only choose one, all black. And I've thrown it sunny days. I've thrown it low light. Like, I used to be more of a low light because it creates that kind of, like, silhouette. You know, in the sunny days, mm -hmm. when they get a good look at it, I would try to go with, like, more of a shad color type stuff. But, I mean, any more. I'm I'm just gonna I mean, go with black. places with places that we're fishing, though, it's well. When you and I are frog fishing, it's traditionally more of, you know, a heavy, super heavy cover on the top, <clears throat> where you have to have more of a, like a darker silhouette to be able to like in, in, entice those frogs to actually, first of all, see it, yep. and then go after it. You know, yeah, a lot of times they're not even getting a look at really what it is. They're just going after that right. motion, and that's why they miss it so much because they're just looking at the wake the wake on that slop. And like you were saying, the ish frog that's fatter uh, mm -hmm. and heavier. I think it's almost like an ounce, right? We can look here real quick, but uh, you know when they're yeah. when they're looking up at it, 
you want to have your frog to kind of get through that so they can actually see the target because a lot of times they're just kind of seeing that wake up in that you know uh algae uh, slimy type stuff so if you can't get, yeah. actually get it through there for them to actually see it that's why you get a lot of those misses um three quarters of an ounce three quarter, yeah so it's definitely a bigger frog like what's this one way half ounce yeah five eighths okay so the, so the the river or excuse me the ish frogs that i was talking about they also come with like this weird little i don't want to say it's weird, version. but they have like um uh like a bead type of rattle that oh. is on a, a piece of metal that goes over the the hooks i usually end up taking that off because around here where we fish it that just that hangs on to way 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 too much of the scum and stuff like that yep yep okay second part of it what's your favorite jig that's not war eagle um you know i'm not saying this just to say it but i'm gonna go with like a, a depot custom i just i oh. dude, your jigs are amazing man like seriously I, I honestly i need some more of those we need to get together and well dude it's the exact same mold that, that they use for the war eagle jig so that doesn't surprise me i just need to get one if uh if fat boy's in here nick do you still have that or do you know anybody that could mod me which there was a guy that was ripping me to pieces on one of my jig videos was saying like I was an idiot and like I would pour one at a time. He's like, only idiots do that. Like <clears throat> you, you do a you do a run each hole and just keep it going. And you take like those are all different ways. Forth. Yeah. Anyway, like it, it made me laugh because he's like, any idiot could have just modified that. You wouldn't have to buy all these these different things. And I'm like, so you think a beginner would know how to modify a jig mold to I'm like, so if you get, get one wrong, you've just wasted like 60 bucks. Anyway, he's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. anyway, um, I would like oh, to. Oh, you have, got a fake beard. Yeah, you got a fake beard. <laughs> um, I would like to have that jig mold modded so I could get heavier hooks in there. So if anybody knows yeah. somebody that mods those or sells them, because then it would be just like a war eagle if it was one hook. But thickness. somebody just said something in reference to a jig. Where to go? Something about a, I'm not a fan of the football heads. I am a fan of the straight up ball, just regular ball headed finesse jigs. So Randizza likes this, which is just a round, literally a big round. Mm -hmm. There's the focus. Get with it, baby. Just a big round. Whoop, now I can see my face big round ball headed jig and i agree i mean for fishing rocks <clears throat> this is the best best way to attack it going as light as you can i like a 5 16 randy usually goes with like a 3 8 but yeah i don't think there's a better way to attack rocks and randy's shown me that i mean he's a, a jig wizard my favorite jig that's not a war eagle i mean i love my own obviously because you can make them you can make whatever color you want that's the fun of it yeah I would say the Luke Clausen finesse jig was one that I was really, really big on. I don't think I have any. Is, I think I get all those away. Is that um, the two pack? Did they come in a two pack? I think I have oh, a bunch of those. It's maybe. A it's a one pack, is but it? it's got like it's a round ball headed jig, but it's the line ties just a little bit recessed. Good hook, and that's from Dirty Jigs. Um, Dirty Jigs makes a, a ton of different jigs, but like. As far as that type of round ball head jig, I think this is a jewel, the one I was just showing, which comes in a two pack. I think that's jewel, jewel baits. There's a number of them out there. Um, so I don't know, Eric. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that's fun. I love the this or that. So thank you. Um, Eliza is the next one that we have. Uh, would love to see you grab a Bull Bay LMG and review it. Local Florida. Is that like a light, light machine gun? Pew pews? I, th I think that is. <laughs> LMG. Review. Let's see. Let me look. I don't even know. Bull Bay LMG. Bull Bay LMG. I don't have any LMGs. Bull Bay bait casting rods. Oh. Hmm. Huh. Dogfish Tackle Marine has them. Bull Bay LMG bait casting rod. That's a cool looking rod. Here, hold on. I'll uh, yeah, I'll share it. That. I've never even heard of these. This must be like a small local shop uh, or something here. Large shop game. Like I, I come across a lot of these from like local smaller people and 
some of this stuff is outstandingly like just huh. head over yeah, heels like amazing people. i really like the uh like the inside there what's Looks the deal cool. what's up with that like little space right there between or is that just showing that between the the butt and is that a space or is that like white plastic in between oh, it's just like it looks like metal like a like a stainless steel oh, okay or something yeah that's cool I've oh, never okay. heard of these. I, I don't know yeah, yeah comment below anybody else have, have any of you used any of these uh, pretty cool that bait, that's a the pretty bait odd. the bait keeper location though yeah so okay i gave people crap about that and i gave rods crap about that i will tell you if you're using anything that has treble hooks they are way better off being back here because really? I always put my bait wrap on it. And then that way, when you put your rod sock up top, your rod sock never yeah. interferes with those treble hooks down here. Single hook huh. baits, I always just like hook it on the reel. I've got a really bad habit of sure. that. I know some people cringe, but most of my single hook baits, I hook there and I don't, it, it never gets in the way of the rod sock. But Well, well I mean, now like a lot of the reels of are actually coming with like a, like a little what is it the lose has a little like drop down bar thing where you can hook your your oh, baits yeah, onto really it and you know a yep. couple of them have those so I just, there's the something house? about where that is i feel like i grab there all the time you know <laughs> sycamore sycamore says i've been fishing for 30 years and i love how, how there's always a bandwagon to jump on dobbins chatterbaits Drop shots, Ned, Ned Riggs. I'm kind of like, wait and see what makes it over time. Sycamore, dude, you're 100% right. Randy and I talk about this all the time. Lures, I wouldn't say necessarily there's a bandwagon for gear because I think, like, I guess maybe, depending on how much you get into it. But <clears throat> I like trying the new gear and looking at the new gear that comes out. However, for, for, for like a lot of the lures, I will agree that, like, there's, I've said it before, the ebbs and flow, that, you know, the up and down. Like back in the day, you know, I've talked about it all the time. My dad used to throw a, a tequila sunrise worm. Like that was the bee's knees. Lots of people threw them then. And then it's like it completely went away. You never heard of that color. Spinner baits, you know, you look at Hank Parker, uh, Kevin Van Dam, you know, all these guys that were huge in spinner baits. And then like spinner baits disappeared when the, the chatterbait came out. However, right. a lot of those, a lot of those are good, you know, to, I wouldn't say jump on it and go full in, but like the chatterbaits, they catch fish. There's spots and times that I like a chatterbait more than a spinnerbait, you know, so. Realistically, with all those baits, they're all cyclical. They're going to come. They're going to have their their point in time, and they're kind of going to go away. Just like you said in your last your last unboxing with the uh, uh, the tube jigs. Like, I remember, yeah, you know, really when I first started getting back into fishing, I was like, tube jig, tube, tube, tube. And that was probably like 20 years ago. I was really big into throwing tubes and you know apparently they're starting to come back a little bit so on the comeback roger dude roger that's a great point and that's that's the hard part sometimes when i'm trying to help somebody with gear is a lot of the gear just fits in the hand better like dios are a little bit different shaped uh you know than like a lose or a shimano and there's some that just that just glue to your hand and feel good so absolutely you know the feel in hand can be a big part of it 100 percent. it's all about feel and that's why i've said it a hundred times before i don't like buying something online that i haven't had a chance to put my hands on yet you know what else slx we got to talk about the slx stuff oh we've got all kinds of talking stuff going on bass pros doyle oh, that's how far behind i am Eight, oh debo let me let me just ask you right now where you're oh, kind of yeah. flipping through there what do you want to throw this year? Spring comes, summer comes, early summer, mid summer, late summer. What do you want to throw? Well, you weren't on, but I said that the free rig, free rig was going to be one that I was going to try to work. Um, oh, with your snap. success, yeah, with your success on it last year, I got us some. I found some tungsten uh, that was on yeah. sale, free rig weights that I grabbed us. Um, Chris Russ actually sent us some free rig weights, so Chris, thank you, brother. Oh. And he sent us uh, some poop baits to try some of the uh the the cover scats dude the, <laughs> the the free rig was it, it blew my mind like how good it was uh i think i started throwing it late summer probably late summer 
yep. in, uh, into fall and it just it just caught fish like over and over and over again it was amazing free rig and then i want to try drop shot more i want to get a, like a dedicated drop shot rig and try to put more time in with it i still just feel like it's a headache to throw from the bank a um, lot of the here, hold on one second i'm uh, i'm checking my planner Yep, this is the sixth year in a row that you've said you want to try the drop <laughs> shot more. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, what would pike and tackle say? Pike and tackle. What we real would you recommend for larger paddle tails, seven plus inch range? I think this will be a good way to get into the swim bait game on the cheap. Um, okay, so I would say for larger swim baits, a two hundred ish size reel minimum i know some guys that like a 300 size heck there's even guys like will throw a 400 size i think that's overkill for that 200 at least uh or 300 because you're going to throw bigger line i would assume you know 20 pound floral mono bigger braid that bigger diameter braid or line whatever uh is going to take up more room on that reel right so you want to have something with you know instead of like a little 70 size reel uh and something that has at least an aluminum side plate handle side plate so an aluminum frame with at least the aluminum handle side and that's usually most of the reels you'll find these days uh when they bump up to that they're not both sides aluminum some of the diodes are but i would say at least an aluminum frame and an aluminum handle side plate for throwing those bigger baits <clears throat> you like a diode tattoo with 200 a tranks uh 300 they actually have the tranks 200 now too right which I think is, yeah, I don't even know. Uh, they have the Corrado 300 that I've not used, but I don't know why you'd go that over like the Tranks. Um, what else? The Dial will win. I have a 300 size Dial win and like it a lot. I use that for my smaller musky baits, uh, glides. Um, those are some that I would rattle off that I can think of. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about right now. Is, is this Spanish that you're speaking? I have no idea. <laughs> and you can get in the the you know the round reels like the Shimano. What is it, Shimano? Uh, oh, the ones Shimano? that look like big offshore reels for the salt yeah. water, huh? Yep, yep. Shimano is it? it starts with a C. Why am I blanking on it? I can Kishin. tell you. We can look. Huh? Kirsch. Can't, you're breaking can't. you're breaking up i didn't hear you sure, 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 sure. yeah those um i will tell calcutta? you here, calcutta conquest. yeah calcutta or conquest calcutta is the more Cuisinart. expensive calcutta and Con conquest yep was that matt did matthew ask acevedo answer it uh dustin lynn and then uh, okay. i think that's the first one i see and then jp are I know, matt, said conquest. Guy. matthew what do you use for like your seven inch swim baits he can help us on that too He's a big swim bait guy. Uh, let's see what else do we have. I think there was one more. NH Fishing Gal. Is that New Hampshire Fishing Gal? Thanks for becoming a member. Yeah, thank you to all my members. I want to have a members only live. So that would be for any of Debo's. Uh, what is it? Debo. I forget. It's like the second tier up. So anybody that's second, second or third tier uh, can join in those lives. And I want to try to have some people on, like if you're top tier, Debo's OG tier, um, I want to try to get some of those people on, kind of like Burley does with his member only. Would be a lot of fun. Uh, oh, man, we're all back here talking about frogs. Eliza, I would love to have you look. Oh, Eliza, did you, did you donate twice? We didn't need to donate twice. Eliza, thank you if you did. I'm just, I'm really behind on comments. That's that's what we're getting at here. I'm sorry. Uh, second tier is the Dink Squad. There's the Fish and Friends and then the Diva OG. Yes. The top. Fish and Friends is the first one. The Dink Squad, which is the second tier, and Debo's OG. Uh, those would be the able to to view the member only live. Fish Daddy Arthur said, BT USB adapter on the way to your PO. I got you. BT USB. Bluetooth USB uh, Bluetooth? adapter. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Arthur. You didn't need to do that, dude. I'm, I'm not a techie guy when it comes to that stuff. Randall sent me like his tutorial on how to hook up the Bluetooth and I went in and followed dude, it. And it's like, I can't believe you couldn't Bluetooth. get that. I'm like, that blows me stupid. away. I, I keep seeing these, uh, these people posting about Cardiff and I, I keep, 
I keep seeing car talk with click and clack on AM 600 or around here. It's AM 600 radio. It's just side note. I don't know. Oh, yeah. The oh. Cardiff is the. You, you've never car listened to, to car talk, huh, Debo? No, I don't. No. It literally was AM radio where people would call Klingon? in. Car talk? People would call in and they'd be like, my car's going like, brr, 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 brr. They'd be like, yeah, I think it's your rear diff or blah, 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 this or that. Super awesome show. One of them died recently, though. So RIP, click or clack. Yeah, RIP. Uh, are you talking? Are you talking Spanish now? Because that sounds like Spanish. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. Uh, okay. What else do we have? Uh, let's see. Ribbit. So we were talking. Oh, yeah. The Bass Pros, the Kermit. Okay, I need to get caught up here. Let's see. Do we have any other? I'm going to scroll through real quick. I'm going to skip a whole bunch of comments. I'm sorry, Fish and Friends. I want to make sure I didn't miss any sort of donations. Uh, I don't think I did. Then we're going to get caught back up, and I'm going to try to get some good questions. Okay, I'm caught up. Didn't miss anybody. Yeah, so those uh, round reels, which I don't like anymore. Some people love them. The Calcutta, which is the more expensive one. They are beautiful reels, but 300 size and then the, uh, the Cardiff. Yeah, I've, I've tried to hard hold hard them, and they just don't feel comfortable to hold. I used to have a bunch of these back in the day. My abus, I had a bunch of round, round abus. Yeah, I mean, I just don't know what it is about yeah. it. I, I just yeah. don't know. Fishing with Gramps is on my side, but he loves car talk. Come on now, Debo, get on our level. Yeah, I'm not on that level. I, I can change my oil. I can change wiper blades. I can change my tire, and that's about it. Um, okay okay what else do we got let's see what what kind of good questions if you asked a question i'm getting caught up we're at an hour 15 so we'll maybe go for another 15 minutes here if you have any questions that are burning oh, a hole in your your noggin there is a, a this or that outdoor angling at 9 17 9 17 try new techniques or refine techniques you already know you got already it. know Try new techniques or refine what you, I would say refine because there are some things that I get to do when I get on those bites. It's a ton of fun, like jerk bait. I've had some amazing jerk bait days. I am not a great jerk bait angler. Like uh, it's, it's not my deal. Like there have been days where I've caught 50 fish and I actually did that spring and fall this year, but I'm not yep. an amazing jerk bait angler. It's uh, like it I just don't... happens the the suns align and you just catch them on jerk bait somehow. Yeah, yep, yeah. It's like I found a drop off where there's fish and I think this should work good, and then you just you find a pile of them, you know. But yeah, stuff I, like that. I think I think I would go with refine, but add a, a little asterisk to that, like take note or do something to try to like remind me of what the hell I was actually doing when I started to catch them using doing this or doing that or you know trying to figure something out and once i figure it out making sure i make reference to what i was actually doing at that time if that makes sense yep yep yeah if y'all have this or that this or that's are, are a ton of fun jeff dang jeff with a tin bomb y'all are too dang kind i appreciate it man jeff says uh just want to give you a little to keep the lights on well jeff i appreciate it um everybody who has become a member who, who donates it means a ton to me my channel you know with the help of randall i've said before that i i would have quit i am 99.9 percent .9 sure i would have quit uh randy talked me out of it when i was kind of at my lowest of low so randall whether you want to admit or you want to shake your head and go oh, shucks. i already i already shook my head and told you to shut up so i know uh, Jeff said, so Jeff, I appreciate that. He said, just uh, bit the bullet and bought a tracker. 195, nice. Going to have to swing your way from Des Moines and pick you and Dizzle up and slay some bass. Dude, that would be awesome. That's yeah, a nice boat. I've been looking at boats, and I just can't find for a good price. Nick and I were just talking about that, and he's like, so you'll buy one of these stupid snow dogs, but you won't buy a boat? And I'm like, dude, I can't find good boats around here for, like, nothing less than 15 k Like, isn't Sailorville down Des Moines way? Is that supposed to be a really good uh, fishery? Sail is Sailorville? Yeah, I think Sailorville is. I don't know. I I don't fish over by Des Moines a ton. I think Sailorville's got a lot of uh, <laughs> we've standing fished. standing trees and stuff like that, kind of like uh, brushy. 
Brushy Creek. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, I fished that once. Um, there's another that, one over there. That's Brushy Creek is overwhelming. Big Creek? I think Big Creek is the other one over there. Brushy Creek and Big Creek. I think you probably, I thought I took you to Big Creek that one day where you caught that decent fish on a jig because you were using a little bit lighter jig than me. That was Red Rock. That was Red yeah. Rock. Right. Big Creek and Red Rock. Yep. Okay. There we go. Yep. Yep. Um, so yeah, Jeff, I appreciate the ton. Yeah. Uh, any, so right now, obviously you all know that I have a family member going through, through cancer treatments and stuff. So I've honestly been trying to stay away from pretty much everybody. So I don't know if I'll get to do that this year, Jeff, but the year following, um, uh, because that family member is, is everything to me and I'm, I'm trying to do everything I can to keep that person safe. Um, so I'm social distancing and, and basically being a hermit, uh, because I don't want that person to get sick going through chemo that could be going on for a year, which sucks, but it is what it is. So, um, I try to keep my distance. So I don't know about this year, but hopefully in the near future, I definitely want to do, I want to do like a meetup. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff I want to do. I would love to put on like a little meet and greet hangout, but Jeff, if we get a chance, uh, I would be honored brother to share a boat with you. Tom, Tom with the donation, uh, are these castable sonars worth it or trash? Tom, I've never actually used one, so I can't tell you for sure. I've didn't, never uh, money on one. didn't your doppelganger do like a couple of videos on them? Burley? Yep, I think Burley has Burley done a couple Paul, of videos. Yeah, I think I think I started watching one because I've kind of I've kind of been tugging at your coach strings, asking about those and seeing if yeah, they're yeah. they're worth anything and and stuff like that and. You know, because they're, for what they are and, you know, just thinking, oh, I could just yeet this out into the middle of the lake and I'm kind of screwed and hopefully the wind's blowing my way. Um, like they're, I, I'd kind of like a little bit more about them. And, you know, at the same time, you have to be able to have uh, cell phone service and be able to get the Wi-Fi in. And I know there's a lot of places that mean you fish where i like there's hardly any wi-fi or not wi-fi but uh cell phone service to be able to even text each other if we get you know kind of separated and being like hey where you at? how you doing stuff like that and let alone being able to connect to a a bobber that's floating out in the middle of the lake yeah i i yeah i just don't know i've never i've never gone that route i figure like when i'm bank fishing i'm trying to run and gun so much that i just i don't know now back in the day what i used to do and still i mean still what i do is Anywhere you're casting, like if you have a, a Texas rig tied on, if you're fishing a spot and you're not exactly sure what like what the bottom composition is like, kind of like a three ounce Texas rig, toss it out and just drag it back. You'll be able to feel if there's slopes, if there's brush, and they're weedless enough that you usually don't get those snag too much. That's what I used to do back in the day, like fishing the ponds around where I grew up, cast it out and reel it in on the bottom to see what's out there. It's like the poor man's uh, sonar. <laughs> Uh, what else do we have? Um, so Gramps, worth it or worthless? I like it. Mr. Chuck, uh, worth it or worthless BFS? Well, I just got a decent BFS last year, the uh, SLX BFS. It casted a 1 16th ounce pretty well, but then I caught it behind me and snapped uh, my line. The thing that is hard for me to justify, though, is my ultralight spinning gear did it just as well without far less of a headache. It did it better. Yeah. So I'm I'm not fully on the BFS train yet. I do think a BFS reel like that could be nice for like light crankbaits or light jerk baits. But as far as like I see these guys throwing like little trout things and like I don't I don't know if it's like a you know they just like the challenge of it. I just feel like my ultralight spinning setup. It's just fine, you know. So I feel like I went probably like a I feel like I went probably like a month, month and a half not knowing what the hell BFS stood for. <laughs> bigger, faster, stronger. That's what I always think because we have uh like that bigger, faster, stronger program around here in the Midwest. Like when I was growing up, I don't even know if it still exists, but <laughs> um John Long says this or that Hank's tackle or Jim's tackle collection, TJ. I don't know for sure hey. how much Hank has. I feel like Hank hoards a lot and doesn't really talk about it. Jim is pretty open that he's uh, a tackle nerd. I mean, when your name is Tackle Junkie. Yeah, I'm going with Jim. Collection. Yeah, Jim. I would go Jim too. 
Jim, I'm on my way. If you're still in here, I'm, I get all your stuff. That's what how this works. <laughs> Jim, who has like, what do you say, like over 100 and some combos, basically? Insane, Mr. Jim. That, that, that's like saying, that's like telling your wife, how much did you pay for that combo? Oh, 100 bucks. Don't worry about it. It's no big deal. Meanwhile, uh, you actually go and look at the bank, the your receipt, and it's like four hundred and seventy-eight dollars. I'm going to uh, I'm going to gyms. Yeah, same. Um, Josh Robbins, my favorite lose rod. I actually can answer that, and I'll show you because I don't remember some of their naming conventions. I don't like when they're so like close together. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't really love that, but it's the one that's like one hundred and fifty. They had them on sale for like a hundred bucks. I am sure you, you honestly sounded like me right there, like a lot. Why? You know, it's the black one that uh, has the, the eyelids well, on it and you cast with it. <laughs> well, there's the black one you have that you like. The one the I had speed was... school something or I don't even know. Uh, here. Why, why is the custom? alpha hard for me? This one. So the lose custom speed stick. I love this rod. I think for the money, right around 150 it's a hard stick to beat. The only thing that I noticed, uh, and I'll have to talk about this in the review, is when you go to put a reel on, so this rod's a little bit different. This part here, the, the hand grip, this is actually what unscrews and screws on to hold your reel in place. So it doesn't have a nut mm -hmm. up here, as you can see. There's no like front reel nut. The handle unscrews and screws on. However, I noticed, here's a better view of it. So this part, I'm sharing, right? Yes. Yeah. This part of the handle, ah, this part of the handle is what screws on and off. However, the point from here to here is fixed. So you can't move this. Like if there's a real nut here, you can unscrew it to make that bigger, right? With, I noticed Shimano, Shimano must have bigger a bigger reel foot than other reels because Shimano reels are kind of a pain in the arse to get in here. Like you have to really <laughs> angle it and really push it down in. The, so, the lose reels, no, no issue. So I guess that, just... that foam piece is the part that comes out, uh, foam for lack of a better word, but like the the soft handle part is what actually unscrews and slides out and the yeah. the real housing or the seat that it sets in stays where it is. Correct. Yep. That plastic or I don't know. What I don't is know if I like that. I didn't at first either. And I it wasn't a huge deal because I thought, well, what if this breaks? Will be no different than if a, a real seat in front broke. Like you're screwed either way. You can't just replace it. Sure. So I was like, eh, I didn't like that. That was the part that screwed on. After I got it up and screwed on and stuff, didn't notice anything. Didn't come loose. Never had any issues with that. The only issue I had was that Shimano reels must have just a tiny bit bigger reel foot, and they're hard to get in there. So yeah, I, I guess I would I take that over what. Uh... The 13 fishing reel or rod that I have, where you can't get a grip on that, the front yeah. reel nut. Like, yeah. that is like one of the bigger pains of the butt that I've ever experienced before. It's like, like you can one. grab it, but you can't, you can't grab it, grab it in order to twist it, you know? Um, and Randy, I think you like the black uh, TP1 black. You really like that one? Is it, or is it the. This is the one you had, I think, that you really liked. Mm. I think this is the one you have your is SLX it? DC on. Because this is the one that has, like, the spiral guide. That first one is that, like, spiral whatever guide. Um, have. No, my my DC's on that Veritas. Oh. Yeah, this yeah. is the one that you have that you like. This is the one that... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. TP1 Black. That's what I have. So, no, the the looms that you, you still have on mine. Oh, that's what was on it. Yes. I'm still going to do that review. I'm sorry. I borrowed one of Randy's reels. I've had it forever. <laughs> uh, but then if you want to drop down, like if you have a $100 budget, the reel we were talking, or the rod we were talking about earlier that I really like is the TP1X. Uh, I've had really good luck with it. I like it. So, yeah, I just, I feel like, I like you know, Lose has a lot of, you know, really... I don't want to say lose is the current day Abu, but it kind of feels like they've taken over that that seating where Abu's kind of moved to the back, and you can go get you can go get an Abu air quotes type of setup, but in lose fashion, or you know you can go all the way to the tippy top of lose and you know go 
go all in for way more than what you could have done with that boo. Yeah. All right. So we went down the lose rods. Uh, what else do we have for questions? What else? What else we got? Uh, Question for five hundred. <laughs> Court. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one or a good thing that like to bring up. People, I feel like, kind of go back and forth on this stuff of what's the best. I know they say something that's not very that does not dampen the vibration so something harder that allows that vibration to go through like cork or there's you know there's even newer stuff now like that kevlar with the uh um, and rods you know as far as sensitivity i think they say cork or something like that harder versus like the wind or eva that kind of dampen some of those vibrations I'm, I'm a line finger. We talk about that all the time. So I, I really don't care. I think a lot of that's personal preference if you finger the line, because you're going to get just as much sensitivity feel on that line as you would with a cork. I mean, even more. I'm, I'm a huge proponent of that. I feel like the only downside of cork is, you know, you and I are a little bit different. Um, you know, I'll take your hand-me-downs any day that you want to, but I'm not going out and getting new stuff as often as what you are. And I feel like cork has more obviously of a tendency to like break down and like not disintegrate but it, it, because it's more of a natural type of material you're going to get more of that reaction to like the elements and daily use and stuff like that that you would have over like an artificial type of uh, material uh aiden thoughts on the enu rig what's the enu rig Jap is it uh didn't we talk it was a japanese yeah, it's a joke because like it was all the, it was all that's where you have to put like a straw through it and do all this stuff and is that uh, like that one top water yeah, where i got you that one time i was I like know. here i got this on accident and i have no idea how to use it and you have to like put your line through the entire uh body of the lure and Chris, okay, we're at an hour and a half. Well, I'll take a couple more questions. We'll each pick each pick one or two, and then we're going to get out of here because we're at an hour and a half. We still got three hundred people. Y'all are freaking awesome. I love. I look forward to Saturday Night Lives. Like, there are times when I despise like getting everything set up and like doing a productive video, but like, there's never a time when I like sit down to do a live and I'm like, oh, I don't want to just sit down and talk fishing. Like, to me, this is just fun. This is like what me and Randy would do, you know? So right. Except but for you know, actually joined it didn't, didn't Saturday uh, Night Live isn't that good anymore. It's actually gotten terrible. Never mind. I was never a big Saturday Night Live guy. I never got into it. Yeah, back in the oh, Sandler, Farley, dude, Chris never Farley was a it. genius. Anyway, what's uh? Okay, Chris, what are the first baits you guys will be throwing after <sighs> ice out? Lipless, lipless is always top of my lipless. list. I love throwing a lipless when those when the fish start warming up, moving yep. up shallow. Um, spinner bait, jerk bait when it's still cold water, finesse yep. jig, huge. Ned rig is great early in the spring. Um, yeah, I was gonna say some rain. sort of or like uh, you know, you're gonna say it's weird, but like kind of like a shaky head with more of like a stiffer worm. I feel like it's a little bit better with not as much action. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, know you, I feel like you're a bigger fan of the shaky head than the Ned. Yeah, I feel like I'm also kind of like a, a wild card when it comes to like fishing and stuff like that. I usually Living tend to do edge. stuff that's on the edge. He doesn't yeah, he, follow the rules. Yeah, I usually buck the system <laughs> and do whatever the heck I want to do compared to what the book says I should do. Breaking the law, breaking the law. <laughs> um, and I had one other thing I was going to say too. Oh, paddle tails, like slow rolling, like rolling a paddle tail. Awesome early spring, or like an underspin. Yep. Wanted some flash, but love underspins. You are you are uh, an underspin thrower. Okay, uh, we had a bunch of people talking about sealing their cork handles. Yeah, I did see Jim Tackle Junkie does that. I never have. I just use them, and yeah, they get gross looking. But yeah, you can see cork seal the handles. Check out Tackle Junkie's video on that. <clears throat> um, let's see. Oh, Patriot. Patriot's talking about it right there. This or that full handle. Oh, full handle or split handle rods. Ooh, I'm a split handle guy. I don't like a full <sighs> handle for some reason. Yeah, it depends. Like, 
I kind of go back and forth. It, it depends on the rod and how it feels in my hand. Like that old Daiwa Tatula that I have, I can swap over and show you because the newer ones have it too. But I have an old one that's just so freaking comfortable. Um, whoops, there we go. Uh, that I don't mind it. But there's some rods that I, I like the split better. So I don't know. I kind of go back and forth. Again, the whole thing just has to feel comfortable. So the new... Um I'm trying to think if I have anything that isn't a split handle, though, actually. So these are not, I don't know why that says new. The Daiwa Tatula rods are not new. <clears throat> uh, they must have added new, like a new line or a couple new links or whatever. But I have this one that's an old one, and it's a seven-foot, like, moderate, fast something. Maybe it's this. I think it's that, seven-foot regular. I think it says it's for, like, square bills, top water, and something else. Um, but it's a full cork. And I love it. So I don't know. It, it just depends. I like both. You, Randall? Oh, yeah, you said you're all split. You're lacking the split. Yeah, I mean, I just don't know as if I have. Like, I, I think I do have a, a solid core candle, but that's on like a like an ultralight or something like that. Mr. Dreams, 88. Uh, for me, bar none, beast, uh, owner beast, 6 out with the quarter ounce weight is what I throw on the Miyagi 95% of the time. Unless you want it to go a little bit deeper, you're fishing deeper water, you can bump up to like a three eighths, but I'm usually fishing the Miyagi's pretty shallow, six foot, you know, or so. Um, so I think that quarter ounce six odd owner beast is the big thing that, though, because they have a, a bigger, wider belly. Perfect for that Miyagi. Uh, I did see a donation. I don't want to miss any of the donations. Eric. Eric again. Thank you, Eric. Um, how do you become a member of the channel? Shout out to Mr. Stubbs. Mr. Stubbs will make it on my ice fishing video. There was, a, I think, a couple people asking if I'm going to do any ice fishing. Um, I did talk about it a little bit at the beginning, but um, I can show you. I can show you a quick... No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to show you. I caught some fish. I caught some pretty decent fish. Um, so you have to wait till the video. But yes, there will be some ice fishing um how do you become a member of the channel some people can see it and some people cannot but when you go to like my channel so if you go like to the on your phone or youtube or whatever when you go there uh under it like if you click on one of my videos like by where it says subscribe there should be like a join member thing some people were saying they had to go on pc to see it and i check some people's channels and some people i'm able to be a member on my phone uh other people i have to go to like to it on my computer so i don't so know so do you want me to do you want me to show you this on my computer real fast evo what i'm gonna have to flip my phone around for the join it just so happens i have it like right here yeah if you have it sure so well G jeepers jeepers so i don't know if you can see this where am i at here solo layout so this, is, this isn't a bottle amend it right here don't worry about it um so we're looking and right down here join you would just uh geez you'd click on that and it would give you your three options Boom. your fish and friends your dink squad your og and then it'll give you a detail as uh you know like what's included on each one of those <clears throat> thanks randall thanks for that tutorial Look yeah at no you. problem i try to help Look i'm that helping beautiful face such a handsome fella. I'm helping. Um, let's see. So we got some some other stubby talk in there. We love Mr. Stubbs. He's such a good boy. He's my therapy dog. I love that dog so freaking much. Stubby's a good uh, boy. Except for he else? wants to get like baby rabbits. <laughs> yeah, except when he wants to chase rabbits and then he'll jump out of my fence. That's why I had to put up a six foot privacy fence because he just he decided to jump out the yard and chase rabbits, which <laughs> is not good, Mr. Stubbs. Okay, let's see. We're going to end on Rob. Rob, supporter, awesome guy. Always appreciate you, brother. Uh, he said, just picked up a killer deal. 70 bucks on a brand new inbox Abu Revo SX. So that would be the middle tier, which is usually 159 bucks, I think, the red and black one. Uh, I watched there. your cast comparison with it. What is your opinion for frogging with this reel? No issue frogging with that. I use the Re excuse me, the Revo X. That's a $99 reel. Lasted me all year. Uh, I thought it was a good year, good uh, reel for frogging. 
So I know some people, like if you're fishing the really, really heavy stuff, Rob, I don't remember where you're at. Are you Michigan? I want to say. I want to um, say somewhere around here, yeah. If you fish the really, really heavy stuff, I know there are some guys that swear by aluminum frame and aluminum handle side plate for those, like the real thick stuff. But, you know, a lot of that is how thick, how much you fish, how many big fish you're catching, you know. But, I mean, for me around here, I caught some some really good fish on it that year, the Revo X. But, yeah, I like the SX a lot. I didn't put enough time in with it, and I felt kind of like a jabroni after that casting video that it casted so well. Uh, I should have used it more. But, yeah, that's a really good deal, Rob. Good good find. And thank you for the donation, and thank you for being a member. Appreciate you, my friend. Yeah, he's in Michigan. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it. We're getting out of here. Uh, Dizzle, any, any parting thoughts? Thanks for joining us. Uh, we hope yeah. to have Dizzle on at least once uh, every six months when he's not Jesus. with his old lady. Shut up. I'll, I'll be on anytime you want me to if you don't care about my location. I'm just saying, as you can hear, my voice has kind of um, gotten a little bit worse from the start of this. So it's probably a good thing that we're uh, we're ducking out for the night. All right. Well, we're out of here. We'll see you all again uh, next Saturday. Thank you all so much. Oh, and I just pulled my earbuds <laughs> I pulled my ear. That's why I need to. Uh, I've got a. I got a Bluetooth adapter coming. All right, we're getting out of here. Love y'all. See you next live next week.